So now that the system started up, you can see it's still a little hazy. That's because of the sand that we stirred up in the vacuuming process and pouring the new salt water in. This is particularly common with sand in the tank. So what we're going to do is A, allow it to run for a little while, and B, back in the filter in the back of the aquarium, we can place a filter pad across the drip plate to help trap some of those particles. This seahorse tank design is one where the filter system is built into the back of the tank and it incorporates a wet dry trickle filter. We can place a filter pad on the drip plate on top of the wet dry trickle filter to capture a lot of those fine particles that's causing the water to become hazy or cloudy. So now that you've got the inside of the tank wiped clean and you clean the light hood as well as address the filter system, it's now time to vacuum the gravel. And you have to be aware of two things in this tank in particular. One, you do have seahorses in there currently feeding. And two, there's also garden eels in the tank. So we have to kind of really be careful and pay attention as we go in and vacuum the gravel. What we're really trying to do is extract the debris off the surface, uh, but at the same time, I think I do want to plunge the vacuum device down into the gravel. And actually, more specifically, this is sand, live sand. Uh, I do want to extract some of the debris from the sand, but at the same time, I don't want to siphon the sand out of the tank. So you have to kind of regulate the hose very carefully. As you can see, the dirty water that we've siphoned out of the aquarium is the same water that we're acclimating the new seahorses to. At least for the temperature aspect of it, we're allowing the water in the bags to become the same temperature as the dirty water that we've taken out of the tank. It's been about 20-25 minutes that the plastic plants and decorations have been soaking in the bleach water solution. And you can see that they've cleaned up quite well. Um, so I think that's long enough. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, drain that bleach water and then we'll refill it with rinse water to try to rinse the bleach free of those plastic plants. So we've discarded the bleach water. We're now going to add some rinse water. discard that initial rinse water and we'll fill the bucket up so that all the plants are completely submersed in the fresh water. I'm going to add some dechlorinator, stuff that we use to condition, not so much condition the water, but to remove ammonia or chlorine from the water. I wouldn't overuse this stuff, but at the same time, I wouldn't be hesitant to use it. You know, an inexpensive bottle of this certainly is a lot less expensive than replacing all of your seahorses because you didn't get all the bleach out of it. But let me tell you, use your nose as the determining factor whether there's bleach still in there or not. If you can smell bleach, then you're not ready to put the decorations back into the tank. So we'll let that soak for a little while, go back and finish cleaning the tank. So now that you've cleaned the inside of the tank, you vacuum the gravel, or in this case the sand inside the tank, and you're just about done cleaning or bleaching the plants, it's time to put the new salt water back into the tank. You may be making up your own salt water, if so, uh, allow it to blend or dissolve for a good 24 hours before you introduce it into the tank. Seahorses are delicate creatures. Uh, or in our case, we happen to have 600 gallons of real ocean water uh, that we can use to put into the tank. So go ahead and put this salt water back in now.
plug the system back in. You can see here one of the unique features that I've incorporated into my seahorse tank, and that's a spray bar. It allows for a strong flow of water, but it's diffused across the entire aquarium. It also incorporates a filter system built into its backside. You can see the spray bar is the discharge side of the water pump. That filter pad covers the drip plate for the wet dry trickle filter. So it's a very effective and efficient system. So the seahorses are still acclimating in the bucket of water that we've taken from the tank. They're acclimated into temperature. Now, many people have different procedures for acclimating in addition to temperature. Uh, in most cases, uh, I would suggest opening up the bags, uh, allowing some of the water uh, to enter the bag so that the seahorses can become uh, used to uh, variations in salinity or pH. This vendor has actually gone so far as to include some acclimation instructions and they actually straight out tell you acclimate for temperature only once the uh, uh, time frame for the two to adjust each other has occurred uh, he then says lift them directly out of the bag into the tank so that's what we're going to do wait a little bit longer allow them to adjust to the temperature without opening the bag and then once we feel that they have adjusted to temperature we'll go ahead and lift them straight into the tank so in the meantime we can let those plastic plants finish rinsing and we can allow the tank to kind of clear up a little bit. This tank has an existing pair of seahorses in there, Hippocampus redi. It's also got the remaining four garden eels. And if you take a look closely, this is one of the few times you'll see all four of them out at one time. And within the last four weeks, or the time that we've had the garden eels, there's not been any issues. We did lose the two originally, but the remaining four are still hanging in there and doing quite well. So we've bleached and rinsed the plastic plants and decorations. We've cleaned the inside of the tank and done the water change. We're now ready to put the decorations back in. Notice how the water is cleared up in the back. A lot of that sediment has probably settled or been trapped out by that filter pad that we put in the filter in the back. For this tank, those decorations consist of a uh, artificial octopus coral, uh, kind of peach in color, and ironically, they really like or prefer this peach color. Um, some corkscrew val, which is just a typical freshwater plastic plant. I also happen to have some uh, sea grasses here, artificial sea grasses that came from another uh, seahorse tank that I take care of. And those are going to go into this tank. Uh. We'll go ahead and take the taller sea grasses and place them at the back side of the tank. We'll loop the top end of those sea uh, grasses over the return or the spray bar in the tank. In front of them, we're going to take that plastic corkscrew valve, the one that has little shoes or foots at the bottom, and push those into the sand as the next row of plants in front of the tall plants. And then lastly, we'll take that peach-colored octopus coral. This one, the seahorses really favor, and we'll place that in the middle in the front of the aquarium. After that, we'll get it all cleaned up and make sure to come on back for part five, as we actually add the seahorses with those appendages on their foreheads into the tank.